Now we have come to our first activity. Uh, we will start by setting up our accounts with environments and runtimes, similar to what you may have seen in Boomi Essentials. Then we'll go into the document flow activity. This activity is aimed to demonstrate the concepts that we have covered of batch documents, splitting documents, and running documents individually. Uh, you will see that the process uses counters and logs to show how the documents are flowing through the process behind the scenes. So let's flip over to our platform. In the left pane in your component explorer, you should see something similar to this here. Um, if you have taken other classes, you probably have some other folders in here as well as connections and connectors. Uh, regardless of what you have in there, we're going to be creating some new folders just to keep ourselves organized. So you're going to need your activity guide and we're going to be looking at uh, page one in the activity guide starting from the very beginning and this is the account setup section. And we want to do this simply to be able to keep ourselves a little bit organized here as we move through the class. So what we're going to do first is to create a number of environments. And once you click on the manage link and add a management, you should be presented with a screen like this. If you have taken other classes, it's very likely that you already have environments and atoms created. In the event that you have not, I'm going to go through the steps to be able to create them. Uh, and if you are all good to go, then you can just sit back and use this as a short refresher. So I want to add uh, several environments and I'm going to kind of name them sequentially so that they show uh, on the left pane in a particular order. So the first one is going to be the dev environment and I'm going to leave the classification as production because I'm going to eventually attach the Boomi training cloud to it which is a production level uh, atom. So uh, add that environment first and click save. Add a second one um, called test and click uh, the test environment and then click save. And finally, one more environment. This one will be production. And the cl environment classification will be production and click save. So here on the left, you can see I have dev, test, and production. This is a pretty classic setup. Now we want to create some atoms so that these atoms can be attached to those environments. So we're going to create the three that are available to us the in the cloud so the first one that we want to create is the boomi training cloud and we're going to just name them whatever the cloud name is so boomi training cloud and click ok and you'll see it shows up here in the unattached atoms and thank you for that message and click new atom in the cloud and this one's going to be the test atom cloud and we'll call it test atom cloud and click OK. Close that. And finally, the last one will be the Atom Cloud. And we'll name it an Atom Cloud and click OK. So now we have three environments and three unattached atoms. So you can attach them by clicking on the environment name itself. So we clicked onto the dev environment. And here we can see the attachments, choose which atom we want to attach. For this one, it will be the Boomi Trading Cloud. And let it work through the attachment process. Okay, so that one now has the Boomi Trading Cloud attached there. You can also uh, click and drag. So I'm going to drag the, um, that one's actually, I want to drag the Test Atom Cloud over to Test. And it says, are you sure you want to attach? Yes, okay, let's let it attach. And lastly, we'll do the same with the Atom Cloud and attach it to production. Click okay and let it work through the attachment. And that's that, so that was page one of the activity guide, this is setting up our environments and atoms. So uh, in my particular case, yours does not need to look exactly like this. We will simply need at least one environment and atom in order to do our tests. But I did want to show you this just to see what a, a typical setup might look like with a dev, test, and production environments with the atoms attached to them. All right, next let's uh, jump into our activity. To do that, let's click over to the build tab. 
And the first thing we want to do here is get a little bit organized. So like I said, you might have some different folders in here, uh, but no need to worry. We're going to create our own and work out of our own folders for the ARC classes. So from the root, for me, it's the Boomi training folder. For you, it might be something different, but whatever your root folder is, I'm going to click new folder and call this ARC1 for architecture one and click save. And in that folder, I want to create a new folder for our first module, which is ARC overview and click save. And then within that folder, I want to create one last folder and name it document flow activity one and save. So I'm doing this just so that we can kind of stay organized when we have this process in here, it'll be self-contained. So whenever we need to look back or, or navigate through the component explorer, it will actually make sense to us. So we have our folder set up. The next thing we want to do is click on Browse Process Library. The Process Library is a library of published processes that are available to your account. And so we'll be using the Process Library throughout our class to pull in processes for our activities. And so for right now, in order to filter our view, I want to check on Education Services. So that will limit the number of uh, processes returned. And then search on ARC1 with no space. And for me, Document Flow Activity pops up here first. So that's the one we're going to be working with. And you simply click Install. And from here, you want to select the folder that we just created. Uh, so click on the Choose option and navigate down to Document Flow Activity 1. And click Install. It's as simple as that. Let's go ahead and click View Process, so that will just open up that uh, process right onto our process canvas. And if you expand this folder here, you'll see that it imported everything necessary for this process to run. Profiles, functions, map, this is the process itself, and an XML profile as well. All right, so let's dive right into the activity then. The first thing we want to be able to do is kind of understand the process. And so there's a no data start shape that passes an empty document into this load test CSV uh, message shape, which you can see here has some uh, information about uh, particular pieces of machinery. And so the column in particular that we're going to be looking at is this last one, operational question mark. And you can see that some is set to true and some is set to false. So this is a flat file. I'll just click OK there. And in the initialize step, we are setting two properties here, and we'll see how they count up the number of documents that are flowing through a particular part of the process. So we have two different values here. Both of them are set to zero. The next is this decision shape, and this is simply going to check that flat file profile and the operational column to see if it's equal to true. If it is, the document will flow down the true branch. If it is not, it will flow down the false branch. Next, we want to open up the map to see what's happening in here. And here you can see that there's a function that is incrementing the map counter. So every time the document runs through, a counter is going to be incremented. Let's take a peek at this. And note that this uh, function is using one of the properties that was set, which with a default value, if you recall, was at zero first. The next step was to add a value of one to that and then reset the property value itself and also output that value to the map. So the first document that flows through here is zero plus one is one. So as it gets resets to one here in step three and outputs the value of one. The second document that flows through would uh, already have the property uh, would already have a value of one gets one added to it. So now it's a value of two. And so this is a simple counter that will increment as each document flows through. Let's close this. And on the false branch, you can see that there's also a counter, but this one works a little bit differently. On the right hand side, you can see how this parameter is built. And these two are simple strings that are being concatenated. So the initial value is zero and it's adding a static value of one each time a document passes through it. 
So the first time a doc document passes through, it will be 0, 1. The second time a document passes through, it will be 0, 1, 1. The third, 0, 1, 1, 1, and so on. So this one acts more as tally marks rather than an incremental counter uh, using math. All right, and we are up to page seven in the guide in step eight, where we just want to simply examine the notify shapes. And by clicking on each of them, you can see that it is simply outputting the value of the map counter, whether it's on the true branch here or on the false branch here. And you can see that the level is set to warning. Click OK. And now we're ready to run a test to see what happens here. So let's save and click test. We'll select the Boomi Training Cloud is fine and click run test. And at the top of page eight is a screenshot of what you should be seeing as is depicted here also in the video. Uh, so you can see that the document flows through, hits this check and only flows through the true branch. If you click on the stop at the end of this branch, you can see that there is only one document that flows through. And this is the, if you click on the shape there, this is the document that now the map has transformed from a flat file into an XML document. So you can close that view. And let's click on the name of the, the process. And when you click on that, you have the ability then to view the log. And from here, we simply want to point out that there is one document that flows into the map and flows out of the map as well. And then one document flows into the notify shape. And we can limit the results that we see here by selecting the, the minimum status to show. So when I select the warning level, that was what our notify shape was. You can see that there is one message there, the map uh, document counter had reached eight. So that means that there were eight records that were processed in that document. And that counter was continuously updated each time it processed one of those records. And then by the time it was finished, it passed that one document back out, had calculated that there were eight records in there and reached the notify shape. Now, before we move on from here, one interesting question would be, uh, we saw that there were a number of rows inside of our data. So why did everything flow down the true path, even though when we verified the data, we saw that there were indeed some false values as well? Well, the reason is that this decision shape, when it's working with a batch document, will only check the value of the first row that it encounters. And since the first row is true, it sends the entire batch document down the true path, even though there are eight records in that document. So we may want to change that up and we have different ways to address that and we'll take a look at that now. So let's click the blue arrow now to go back to edit mode. And this time we want to add a data process shape in order to split the documents. So we know that there's eight records in there. And this time we want to split the documents to see what kind of impact that has on document flow. So we're going to add a processing step here of split documents. And it will be a flat file. We're going to split it by the line and retain the first line as column headers and click OK. And we want to attach that to our process. Try and make a little bit more space here. And let's save this and run a test again to see how this will impact our document flow. You probably should have somewhat of an idea of what's going to happen even before we run the test. And at the bottom of page 11, you have a screenshot what your results should look like. And here on the video as well, 
you will notice that the uh, both the true and the false branch have been traversed. And so one of the questions to consider is how many documents have traveled down the true and the false path. So there's a couple of ways to be able to figure that out. If we click on the stop shape and the shape source data, we can see that there were five documents, one, two, three, four, five, that flowed into the true stop shape and would make sense then that there should be three in the false. So we can do that uh, by clicking on those stop shapes, also by checking out the log as well. You can see here that there is one document that flowed into the data process shape. So there's executing with one document and the split resulted in eight documents. So uh, according to the way that documents flow, true branches are always executed before false branches. And the true branch is executed with uh, five documents. And finally, after that is completely processed, three documents are processed with down the false branch. All right, so we're ready to add our last shape, but before we do that, we do want to consider these couple of thoughts. First, why did the decision step route the documents differently this time? Well, we had said that the decision shape, when it was a batch document, would only check the value for the first row, and then it sends the entire batch document down the true path. This time, however, since the documents were split, the decision shape was able to analyze each document as it flowed through and then appropriately send it down the true or the false path. Another question was, in which sequence did the documents execute and how can you tell? Well, when we looked at the log, we saw that five documents went through the true path first into the notify shape and then three documents went through the false path in the notify shape. And this is standard according to the way that documents flow in Boomi that one branch will run until completion before the next branch begins. And so if there are a number of branches, branch one always completes before branch two even begins, branch two completes before branch three goes, so on and so forth. It's the same for true always goes before false and for the business logic shape accepted always goes before rejected. I'm looking now at the bottom of page 14, and we're going to add one last shape here, and this is the flow control shape. So we're going to drag that onto our map. We're going to select run each document individually and click OK. Let's add that into our process. Click Save. And now uh, we'll run a test in a moment, but this time let's consider that this should behave differently because these eight records are now being split into eight documents by the data process shape. And then the flow control shape will send just one document at a time until it completes down the path. So just one document at a time will hit this decision shape and then flow down either true or false. Then once it's completed, the second document will flow down and hit the decision shape and flow either true or false. And so we should expect that our results look a little bit different than our previous test. And you can see that this time it did flow down true and false again. And let's take a look at the log and set the minimum level to warning so we can see our notifications. And this time you can see what I think you should have expected is that each document flows through one at a time. So there is not a total batch count of true versus false. Rather, each document flows through individually and increments its respective counter, either true or false. So we can cancel here and click back and we are finished with this exercise to show how the different shapes will process documents differently.